Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So today we're going to talk about learning hard subjects and getting really awesome at them. And this is really targeted at pretty much everybody, whether you're an advanced person looking to learn a niche subject or an emerging technology, or whether you're an accountant or a nurse and you're trying to get into penetration testing and into information security, it's all done in the exact same way and it's really easy, but nobody really does it right. And they always flip flop around for years, and never learn what they need to learn, but it's really easy to do. And it just comes down to building habits to do it. So the first thing you got to understand is that going back to school is not going to get you there, right? There are cybersecurity degrees, but all they're really going to do is teach you how to sit in a Monday morning meeting and talk about the cybers, right? We don't want to do that. We want to learn real skills and do real things. And school is not going to get us there. It doesn't matter what your degree is and what your background is. It comes down to teaching yourself the things you need to learn. Back in the 90s, these things didn't even exist when I was starting out. I had no outcome dependence on becoming a penetration tester or that anything I learned is going to get me anywhere. I just simply learned these things by looking up random things online, implementing them, and trying to do it, right? Like, there's a video game, it has a 30 day uh, trial. I'm going to break that 30 day trial by reverse engineering it so I can play the video game longer. And that's how you learn these things. You can't learn these things in school. So that's the first thing you gotta know. The second thing you gotta know is that our industry loves quick fixes, but guess what? It's not about a certification that you get so that you get a raise at your job. It's not about the boot camp you get to learn a new skill, to get a new job or to get a raise. Those things are great and they're gonna get you motivated. You're gonna come back all hyped up. I'm gonna be awesome at this thing. And then motivation is basically gonna kick your ass and leave you high and dry because motivation is basically BS. And you're gonna be back to your old habits. You're gonna do nothing. You got your raise, maybe you got your new job. You didn't learn anything, you didn't get better and you're right back where you were. So we're gonna talk about long periods of time. And when I say long periods of time, I don't mean a week, I don't mean a month, I don't mean six months. I mean 12 to 18 months of dedicated time on a subject, one specific subject. We're not going to bounce around. We're going to get good at one thing. So if you're a new person in the industry, you need your base subject, right? Whether it's web application penetration testing or network penetration testing, something like that that's going to get you the job in the industry and help you learn what you need to learn, right? And if you're a more advanced person, it's gonna be that niche subject that's really hard, like reverse engineering or IoT or emerging technologies, et cetera. But we need to understand is within that period of time, you're gonna be spending two hours a day, right? And if you don't have two hours a day, you basically just have time management issues. Everybody has two hours a day. So first thing, start out with one hour a day. One hour a day is easy, get rid of one stupid Netflix show you're watching and actually learn something real. Learn how to do real skills and forget learning the BS, right? And if you're a big video gamer, that's really easy. You probably spend five hours a day, so stop. Spend two hours a day, dedicated learning. Every single day, seven days a week. And the way you're gonna do that is because it's a subject that you actually wanna learn. It's a subject that you're interested in. You're gonna wake up and you're gonna wanna do it. and on that point, when you wake up, right? We wanna do this before the day starts or after the day ends. Ideally before the day starts, so you hit it first thing in the morning and it's your checkbox off. I did what I needed to do to accumulate my hours today and learn the things, right? So when you wake up in the morning, maybe you opened up the shades on your windows so that way it wakes you up earlier because the sunlight's coming through. You get up, you spend two hours and you're gonna split your time in the beginning, if say you're switching industries, 50% learning and 50% labs, but labs are where you're gonna learn. Learning is not where you're gonna learn. The learning is just gonna give you a pathway of where you're going to do your labs, right? So in the beginning, maybe you're an accountant and you're learning how to do web application penetration testing. So you're gonna spend the morning and you're gonna learn about cross-site scripting for an hour. And then you're gonna say, okay, I'm going to do labs on this, either labs online on like Port Swigger Academy or Pentester Labs or Hack the Box or whatever, or better yet, code yourself a small HTML page with an input form 
and then XSS it. Cool. Then implement a blacklist that you find online to block things and then bypass it with the bypass list that you can download fuzzing it. Cool. Now implement a real fix like outputting coding. Learn how to do that so when you talk to developers later on, you understand their side of things. And then see if you can bypass it. Probably can't. Maybe you can. But then think about at a larger scale, how do I centralize this output encoding with maybe like the OWASP, one of the OWASP projects that does different encodings and centralize it so I can use it on all of my web page and have the same type of encoding everywhere and think about how you would do that. Now, you know, you've comprehensively done a bunch of labs on a subject you learned, but you only learned for an hour, but all those labs and doing all those things, if you're new, that might've taken you days. It might not have been 50-50. It might've been much more lab time. And you'll also notice I was talking about coding, defensive, and offensive. Reason being, let's say I was on a penetration test and I see a platform that's a well-known platform or a platform that I Google it when I find some information about it. What I wanna do is, I want to download that. I want to implement it. I want to read the manual and I want to configure it because I need to get inside the brain of the developer. If I'm inside the brain of the developer, I can figure out how he would have configured it, which I can figure out how I would bypass it, right? So that lab time of you learned what the platform is, you learned it, what you're looking at, and then you're going to lab it all up and do both sides of it. Because then when you talk with that developer later on, you can also talk to him about the configurations. You understand it all. You did it yourself, right? So it's a lot of lab time. And we're going to do it over 12 to 18 months for two hours a day, because after 12 months, that's 730 hours. You're going to get good at something. Even if it's an advanced subject, you're going to start getting good. And when you hit that 18-month time frame, you put in 1,095 hours, but you weren't spending 50 hours a week. You weren't going down rabbit holes. You were simply doing two hours a day, which is honestly a joke to do something that you're interested in doing. And that's a whole other point. It's something you're interested in doing. It's not something your boss is interested in you doing, right? If the boss wants you to learn a subject, learn it during the hours he's paying you. Don't waste your time and your free time learning those things. You need to learn the things you want for the goals that you set and where you want to go, right? Because it's not output uh, dependence where you're like, if I do this, the boss is going to give me a raise. No, you're doing it to learn it to create opportunities for yourself, opportunities to grow, opportunities to get better. Because as you learn these things and you get better, opportunities are going to present themselves simply because you've set yourself up to take advantage of those opportunities, right? So over these long dedicated periods of time, you're creating opportunities for yourself. And I'll give you a good example of that. I had a guy and he was working for me. Well, he wasn't working for me yet, but I met him doing martial arts and he told me, hey, you're a hacker. I've always wanted to do that, but you know, I chose this other industry. I'm like, well, why don't you start now? He's like, really, I can learn that? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I gave him the Web Application Hacker's Handbook. I said, hey, read this. Tell me what you think. And that's a big, thick-ass book. Well, a couple weeks later, he comes back. He's like, dude, that book was awesome. I learned a ton. And I'm like, dude, you read it already? That's insane. And I'm like, okay, well, here, go to Pentester Labs and start playing with some labs. And then here's some other material. Here's a, you know, the WAPT certification. Go for that. And he literally was putting time in daily and learning these things. And what happened? Over the course of two years with no outcome dependence of making money, he got really, really good. And when I say good, he got better than most of the web pen testers I knew in the industry. So what did I do? Well, kind of like a bug hunter who knows how to find bugs, he didn't have methodologies yet, right? So I took him, I put him on some penetration tests. He started learning some methodologies. He started like putting all the things he learned into play. Next thing you know, He's shadowing these things for free. He's not getting paid a dime. No output dependence. But what happened is he created the opportunity to start working for me. And then he started making two or three times what he would at a W-2 job had he went that route and did what the boss wanted him to do and learn the bare minimum, right? So that's a good example of just dedicated time over a long period of time. You can become the best. And he came from an industry that was completely different. He was in the nursing industry. He had nothing to do with information security, right? And he became one of the best in that short period of time. And as soon as he started doing it for real as a job, 
he's untouchable, right? So that's something you got to think about it. And then if you're in the camp of, okay, I'm trying to learn this subject and I just can't, it's too hard. It also solves that problem. I had a guy who was working for me. He was a web pen tester and he came to me. He's like, dude, I, I just, I feel like I'm stuck. I'm not getting anywhere. These advanced subjects, I can't breach, you know, the level from beginner to advanced. I'm like two hours a day, bro. I want you to block off your calendar. I don't care if you're on a project. I don't care whatever. You work for me. I'm giving you permission two hours a day. And you need to give yourself permission if you don't have that permission by waking up two hours earlier. But point is, he spent two hours a day. And about six months later, he comes back to me and goes, bro, that shit changed my life. It all makes sense now. I'm like learning things. I'm understanding things. And I'm like, yeah, because two hours a day for six months is like 365 hours. I mean, obviously you're going to get better. And it really is those long periods of time with dedicated effort, right? And you're not just floundering back and forth between subjects a little bit here, a little bit there, doing it, coming back to it. You're staying dedicated to that subject matter and you're going to start getting really, really good. So, you know, Let's talk about now advanced subjects like emerging technologies, right? So after you're doing the 50% and 50% for a while, maybe you're going to get more advanced and you're going to start switching to 25% learning and it's going to be 75% lab. So you're going to say you're getting into a more harder subject like IoT. You're going to spend the morning and, okay, I'm going to learn about all the chips on the board and what they do and the communication protocols. And then you're going to spend the rest of the five days of the week after the first two days. And you're going to do nothing but take apart every device that you own and, and find the data lines and find the power lines and monitor the communications and really dial that in. And you know, the first two days of the week, you learn some stuff. The other five days of the week, you dived into stuff and it's going to start turning into that. And then when you start to getting into emerging technologies, which is more like what I do, research and development, a lot of the times it's theoretical. There is no learning. You basically know something exists and you start going. So I'll give you an example of that. So blockchain. When I started learning blockchain, it was basically just a bunch of kids trying to make money off of a bull run. And then Ethereum came out and there's smart contracts. And it's like, ooh, what's a smart contract? Well, guess what? Spoiler alert. All it is is user created code with a lot of rules that can screw you over pretty bad, pretty quick. But Problem is, all the attacks were mostly theoretical. There was no examples, just like this could happen. Well, so what do you do? Well, you learn a little bit about the coding, and then you hop right in, and you're basically 100% lab time because you're going to take the theoretical, you're going to absorb it into your brain, and then you're going to take the theoretical, and you're going to turn it into reality. How do you turn it into reality? Well, you're going to code your targets. You're going to code the theoretical situation, and then you're going to write the exploit to exploit that thing so that you can learn how it works. And then once you learn all those theoretical things you heard about, then you start searching for those more nuanced bugs and the new things and the new way to utilize those technology and the new way to implement your web hacking world and your network hacking world and all those issues within it and start bringing those into that new emerging technology. All of your previous learned things, start labbing it up and start going forward with it. And that's how you start bridging those gaps. And you're going to start learning really quick that this stuff is pretty easy. Um, it just is long periods of time. So I'm going to break it down for you one more time before we finish this out. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to take a 12-month period of time to an 18-month period of time. You're going to choose one single subject. You're going to set aside two hours a day, and you're going to dive into that subject. You're going to start out with 50% learning and 50% labs. Then you're going to graduate from 50% learning, 50% labs to 25% learning and 75% labs. And then you're going to tell me this changed your life and you're going to comment on here and let me know. And then you're going to start looking into all these emerging technologies and it's going to be 100% lab and you're going to be a badass and you're welcome. So hopefully you learned something from this video. I'll dive into more things about being selfish with your time later on setting goals and really like how to dive into this and, and even go further with this. But hopefully you learned something today. Thank you.